was the time. This is the last message before the Christ comes back to earth. Hear this message. For a long time, mankind has been hanging on the cross. in everything. I am the voice in the cosmos, in the wind, and in the nature of all that is. Also the voice within you, only you have forgotten how to listen to it in silence. So listen now to the message on the outside, which is important during the last days of this old world, because every ending is also a new beginning. As a spirit of this planet, you are a part of my being as much as I am a part of you. Through you, I have lived thousands of lives to gather my experiences. Concealed within you, I have experienced innumerable cultures and personalities within the eternal cycle of life. When life reached its peak after having evolved from the minerals through to flora and on to fauna, the snakes of wisdom, the already completed angels, descended in order to grant man his higher inner guidance. Therefore two voices now lived in each man. Through reincarnating from one to the next life, he felt drawn towards his higher self. Now the time of awakening has come, when each human being can unite with his higher self in order to accomplish his ascension. I'd like to discuss opening to inner guidance because I think that is the key that's required for the coming of the second Christ, as has been foretold. This Christ consciousness is within every single being, for the essence of God is what keeps us alive that pure energy source as discussed by quantum physics. It is imperative at this time that we develop discernment, the ability to discern what is right for us, to listen to our heart and to feel to go with our intuitive guidance. What a lot of us are now doing or becoming aware of the necessity of doing is really learning to listen to the Christ within, to open up to the inner teacher, to open up to our inner guidance. And um, the way you do that is, again, simply aligning to the energy that sustains you through breath work, through light work, through conscious awareness and mind mastery. When the sleeping God, the master of all that exists, became conscious of himself, the indefinable split into being and non-being, into spiritual world and material world, into the higher heavens of transcendence, and the lower worlds of duality. The cosmos formed with all its dimensions and parallel worlds. The world of opposites, which we call duality, came into being. So there are immortal worlds which never experience change, and there are worlds which experience life through constant change. 
In order to be able to experience himself in infinite diversity, he created out of himself unlimited part consciousnesses, cosmic menards who gather infinite possibilities of experience in worlds of duality for the source of all existence. Every cosmic menard can gather experiences through the world of opposites, also known as polarity. Because such a part of God never descends into the mortal world of polarity, but only has to gather experiences, it separated a part of its universal mind and created the souls, a vessel for the universal experiences. The souls, on the other hand, worked in such a way that they needed many individual experiences. However, they could not identify themselves with these experiences. Therefore, they created a vessel, which we call the physical body, so that they could gather experiences by reincarnating from one life to the next in the world of opposites and slowly become perfect. This parting is the rising of the cosmic Christ or the cosmic crystal which grows during the exhaling cycle of the source. One could also compare the growth of the cosmic cycle with the tree of life. Matter is the slow transformation from spirit into light and sound and ultimately into alchemical crystallization. We are condensed shapes of light, like leaves of a tree, which after falling in autumn, are reborn in springtime. Our experiences are preserved in the souls. The cosmos is like a school with many classrooms, and therefore there are, as in a school, different grades of maturity. These grades of maturity of the worlds are separated by different levels of vibrations of matter in different dimensions. Thus different material and spiritual worlds may exist in one place simultaneously. The physical eye, which perceives everything on the frequency of the three-dimensional world, can see only the three-dimensional world. There are 12 planets in our solar system, seven on the material frequency, which are inhabited by higher developed beings, and five inhabited in the spiritual dimensions. Good afternoon. We are here. It is our pleasure to be in your reality once again. And we have, of course, the Pleiadians, and uh, as we've said, it is uh, our pleasure to be here at this time to communicate with you, to give you an opportunity to understand our energy and who we are. This one that speaks through us, we call her our vehicle. She has given you uh, an opportunity to listen to her interpretation of what she feels is taking place as a result of our contact with her. We would like to share with you for a few moments what we feel is taking place. You are sitting in what is called as a species on your planet in a crack in time. You are integral as humans to events that will change the entire course of the history of the universe that you occupy. This restructuring of prime creator's creations has to, let us say, uh, it is accelerated in certain places that are pockets. Your earth is one of these pockets. In actuality, your earth is a library. It was originally designed as a place to store and hold tremendous amounts of universal data. You have uh, occurring at this time what is called the return of the gods. Who are these gods? For eons it was understood that the gods came from space. Yet only recently, in your very uh, short memory, have you separated these gods 
thinking that the gods of the religions had nothing to do with what lie in the great cosmos outside of your planet. Now ideas are being fused together within the human species. And you are beginning to understand that the story of who you are and the place you occupy in existence is much grander than anyone ever dared to tell you. The big secret that has been kept from the human race. Well, it is no big secret any longer. You are surrounded by thousands, hundreds of thousands of forms of intelligence, millions of forms of intelligence and actuality that are magnetized to the earth plane at this time because you, as a human species, must transmute yourselves. You must move into an entire new consideration, a reorganizing of your basic assumptions of reality. This is not so easy. It is challenging. There will be much chaos that will come first in order to bring about this restructuring. Many of you are confused and do not understand what is taking place. The best advice we can give to each of you is to go inside, to listen, to become like the child, full of wonder. My name is Amnek Anek, and I come from the planet that you know as Venus. But at one time we were a physical society. Now we reside on the astral dimension. I manifested a physical body in the spiritual city of Retz that resides on the physical as well as on the astral level in 1955 as a child to come into your societies. And I walked to a spaceship with my uncle Odin, who was also manifested a physical body to work as a scientist here and together we came and um, there I resided on earth for a year in a temple in, uh, in Tibet that is used by the aliens to adjust to uh, the physical uh, gravity and to the environment here. So when Venus was going through this change into uh, the process of from the physical to a higher dimension, there was a gradual process of change where that they went from the physical to the astral. Their whole societies were transferred there. Their vibrations were changed by their level of consciousness and the way that they thought and the way that they lived their daily lives. Um, the Venusian people knew that this process was taking place and preserved one city, the city of Retz, under a climatic dome on the surface of the physical Venus for the to give them the ability to come into the physical and work here uh, to raise the consciousness of mankind on Earth. Now, Earth is going through similar processes of change where that their consciousness is gradually changing and getting to a higher degree. And uh, if this continues, if we continue to, with our work and spiritual development here, uh, this process will take place on the physical very much the same way. It's not uh, a dramatic change. It's so gradual and so natural that it's almost undetectable by the people that are in the process. Mankind has always asked where it came from and where it is going. Scientists of all ages have tried to find the origin of life through physical evidence. They have split matter, studied the microcosm and macrocosm, but even so, they only observed life from a certain perspective, adding rows of parallel interpretations of reality. But they overlooked the most important thing of all, the creator of matter, the spirit that lives in all things, the blueprint and information which forms all matter. They see only subjective partial truths because the objective reality is an indefinable state of existence out of which all conceivable partial truths emerge. They will keep splitting life down to the atom, but will not be able to prove the existence of the spirit. The experiment compares with attempting to capture beams of light. Human beings can never catch up with light unless they themselves become light. The same applies to mankind. It will never be able to prove the existence of spirit, but can only become spiritual itself, a process which the initiated call metamorphosis. Until then, 
even the most splendid achievements and inventions, as well as attempts at explanations of mankind, are an unconscious dream of being still asleep within the development of humanity. All of the original races on Earth uh, came from other planets that are the older planets in your physical solar system, which is Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Venus, the home of the white race, Saturn, the home of the red race, Mars, the yellow, and Jupiter, the black. They brought colonies to Earth when it was a younger planet, just developing, and only had plant and animal life, and set up these colonies, as you know, Atlantis, Lemura, Aztecs, Egyptians, as a few of the societies here. And on all of the dimensions above the physical, the parallel dimensions that run, the astral, mental, causal, etheric, and soul planes, uh, there are vast universes that exist that are parallel to the physical universe. There are, in other words, there are astral dimensions that absolutely are a duplicate of places here on Earth, just as there are on uh, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. In other words, on all the different dimensions above the physical, these uh, societies and these planets and the whole solar system and everything that exists in the physical is duplicated on the higher dimensions until you get into the planes of our dimensions of existence where there is no reference to the physical. And this is a crossover called the etheric plane. And when you cross the etheric plane, there you leave behind any association or anything that identifies with the physical. For millennia after the sinking of Atlantis during the Dark Age, man has been separated from himself and has been in search of the Holy Grail. The Holy Sacral, also called Grail, was man himself. Man himself is the holy container into which the Spirit of God flows. For thousands of lifetimes, mankind's developing soul has searched for itself during the descent of consciousness. Nations and people have been the classrooms of reincarnation in order to develop until that point in time where we enter again a new golden age and where man and God are reunited. In the New Testament book of Acts, at the time of Pentecost, there are flames of fire that appear over the heads of the apostles. This is a type of manifestation of the light body. In a very small way, it is the opening of the light over the head. The early Christians on Ash Wednesday used to mark the forehead with ash symbolic of the power of the inner spiritual eye to use the light in the fuller context of ascension in the mystical traditions of Christianity and the mystical German thinkers and philosophers a time would come about that through divine grace the outpouring of the Holy Spirit the Heilige Geist would allow the light to come around the body and wrap the human recipient or the believer with such power of light here we call this light superluminal light or greater light than the conventional or common light, which such power and majesty that that person can go directly into the higher dimensions. This is normally called the rapture or the ascension process. It is clear that in the context of alter terrestrial intelligence, large members of the human race will experience through the tongues of fire or the miracles of the Holy Spirit or the conjunction with the alter terrestrial forces of divine intelligence the upliftment or the ascension into the higher Christ race of the universe. Therefore, becoming human has only been a cycle in order to gather new qualities for the cosmic source through suffering and happiness. And once again, we have arrived at the end of a cycle of the cosmic plan of humanity. The survivors of the inner and outer period of cleansing, which have already started, are the seeds for a new spiritual mankind which will emerge from all nations. It will be the first root race of the fourth planetary cycle which will rise again into higher consciousness. For some it will be like the past sinking of Atlantis, for others like a return, a rising of Atlantis and of its teachings of wisdom.
because fundamentally every event can be viewed from two sides, from a positive side or a negative one. Even the slightest change in the universe is being guided by the cosmic plan of evolution. The limited human mind fundamentally fears any change and its biggest fear is death, the wall behind which it cannot see. But nothing gets lost in nature. All elements only change into different, more refined states on their return to the light. So mankind is on the verge of the greatest changes within this planetary cycle, a global metamorphosis. And the Mayan calendar has never erred in all the years that it existed. And uh, it states that in time when the incoming consciousness, which we would commonly know as the Christ consciousness, comes in, all things must change. Government, science, and religion, unless they accommodate incoming spirit or incoming consciousness, the Christ consciousness, if you will, will either fall by the wayside or will go through drastic and dramatic changes. Now, we see a lot of that happening in the world right now. We've had a, uh, a coup in the Soviet Union which failed. Down came the Berlin Wall. Transformational changes taking place in places like Romania, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. Now we have Azerbaijan and many others. And all we have to do is follow the news and see these great changes taking place. Now, these great changes, of course, are uh, heralding changes yet to come. Changes which are transformational in nature and must come if we are to survive as a planet and the peoples. These changes will not only touch the lives of all nations, but it will reach beyond all boundaries of life's disciplines, which have already really only existed in thoughts and the actions of humans. Not only does planet Earth change its exterior, its alchemy, but also there is nothing on this planet which is not now in the process of structural and spiritual change. Every process which is not understood brings along a crisis of creation until the process of change has been understood. Thus the future human being finds himself in metamorphosis like a caterpillar which does not know that it will become a butterfly. Everything in the cosmos, in our planetary system, on Earth, and within ourselves, humans, will step further up the ladder of evolution according to the plan of the Creator until a point in time when the cosmic night of creation, the exhaling of God, will come to an end. We need not fear any of these changes because everyone will, as at the end of a school year, progress to the next grade according to his development or repeat the last year. Heaven and Earth will be new. Even a new planet in our own galaxy will be born into a second sun. That part of the mankind which opened itself will experience the resurrection into the fifth dimension of consciousness. You probably noticed in this period, starting from 1983, that there were many changes both in human outside behavior and in the feelings of our physical bodies. They were also manifested by enormous social movements. Reaching the pattern is not a gift. It is not a convenience either. Setting in order is sometimes painful, sometimes unpleasant in feeling. This is the price of the truth, forcing its way through all falseness which we have all created on the planet. Leaving fiction is very painful. Sometimes our physical body suffers. Sometimes man's inner self or his soul suffers because he has to accept and fit to the program which we have brought down eight billion years ago. Which means we are returning to this ideal pattern which lets a man live forever, just now through painful experience.
The Earth, as well as mankind's introduction to the pattern, entered the final period of metamorphosis from the 3rd to the 4th of December 1983. This process will be finished finally in the year 2000. These last years are the time of enormous inner turbulence in mankind and in the planet because the Earth, equally as mankind, has emotional, mental and physical bodies. The Earth has to come back to the pattern, in other words, to the spherical form. It is logical then that the Earth will undergo quakes, floods and other disasters, but not as an expression of some God's punishment, but simply as a process of coming back to the primary pattern. The Mayan calendar and many prophecies of ancient prophets and cultures predict the transition from the Dark Age into the new Golden Age to happen by the year 2011. The inscriptions of the Great Pyramid also point to the year 2011. However, time is a relative factor. During this period, mankind slowly awakens out of its sleep of thousands of years to realize the great reality that the whole universe is alive with different spiritual and material dimensions. God would never have sown a field of flowers like our universe if only one flower, our Earth, would germinate. From the year 2011 on, prophecies predict the birth of a planetary consciousness. That is, that we will recognize ourselves in one another, that we are all different, but that we are one in spirit. The Maya calendar and the, the prophecies from the Maya is a very big topic. I first got interested in this after doing the research for uh, Master Dreams of the Future. And when I found that so many ancient prophecies from all around the world seem to converge on the time period that we are now entering into between uh, the middle of the 1990s and the next 20 year period. Uh, the Mayans, I found, had a very specific calendar that of a cycle of 5,200 years. And interestingly enough, this cycle goes all the way back to 3100 BC and if you add that up to make 5200 you find that it comes out to 2012 which isn't very far away so that in fact the Mayan prophecies about coming into some form of new age or some form of changing of the world uh, seem to be headed right in the near future in the next 15 to 20 year period what are the prophecies of the Hopi Indians I, I was very privileged to be invited by the, uh, one of the elders of the village of Hotovilla, which is probably the most traditional of the 13 Hopi villages in Arizona, to witness some of their prophecies and to see some of their uh, stone petroglyphs that they have um, carved out in the desert for maybe as long as 2,000 years. Their prophecies are very long and complicated, but again they follow the Mayan example and point us uh, to the next 20 years as a very important period uh, in world history. One of their prophecies concerns three great catastrophes or crises of the 20th century. And we've already gone through two of these crises, and we've perhaps started on the third one with what was commonly called the Gulf War, or the uh, invasion um, of the American and British and other forces, the UN forces, into uh, Iraq following the Iraqi takeover of Kuwait in 1991. So this to the Hopi was a very serious sign that we might start a general conflict between the people who follow the moon, that is to say the Islamic peoples, and the Western peoples of the world. They finally indicate that this conflict will become really catastrophic only if people whose color is red also somehow get involved, that there would be a color red involved. And I'm not sure that this will happen, but uh, it is possible when you think the only people left in the world who really use red as their main color are the people of China, one of the biggest nations on the earth. Then will follow 1,000 years of spiritual completion of mankind, the kingdom of peace of a thousand years, when the masters of wisdom will appear. 
Until that time, not only will parts of mankind step back into the fourth and fifth dimensions, but also the cosmic fall of the Omega Cycle will end. God's exhaling flows into the inhaling. The Alpha Cycle commences. Everything returns to the source from which it originated. We are concluding the spiritual involution and the parallel evolution of the physical body. Our forefathers passed on this mystery in the shape of the Sphinx before they left this planet. The descending spirit of the sun, also called soul embodied in the human beast, has experienced the crucifixion of the soul through reincarnation. After the death of the human beast, who symbolically represents the animal qualities of the human ego, man will be reborn in spirit through the completion of his ego. This crucifixion and resurrection will be experienced by many people during the following years of the apocalypse, until the planet in its entirety experiences the resurrection. After that, the marriage of heaven and earth follows. Before the Alpha Cycle begins, we have a non-time, when the Source itself enters into us, reconnects with us, so that we are able to feel that we are a united being. The birth of the planetary Christ and the Buddhi Consciousness. The return of the Christ, the return of the teachers of the worlds, the returning of the extraterrestrials, or heavenly master teachers, therefore all point towards this event. The planetary birth of the Christ consciousness, the neural webbing of mankind into a collective consciousness. However, until the conclusion of this quantum leap into the seventh dimension, the greatest changes will happen on Earth. All great religions of today are familiar with the idea of a second coming. We Christians await the return of Jesus. The Apostle Lucas and Marcus write about it. He will be enthroned in the clouds. The Apocalypse is supposed to have been written by St. John, which is not true, because the essential passages are older than the Apostle John. In the Apocalypse we read about the signs and plagues that will come upon humanity. A star would fall from the sky, the moon would light up, and the heavens would roll up and unfold like a manuscript. Earthquakes and false prophets would come, and man would wander about not knowing what was happening. A group of men will finally survive the second coming of the gods, the so-called final judgment day. But this is not only so in the Christian community. The Muslim community is also awaiting their Mahdi and the Jews their Messiah. Overall, this thought is much older. Let us go back to Babylon and Sumer, where we find the gods Baal and Baal, which are one and the same. In old Egypt, we obviously find the sun god Ra. All these gods have promised to return in the far future, and since that time, the belief of a second coming is kept alive. I am absolutely convinced that none of these so-called Jesus or Mahdi or whatever we may call the Messiah will appear, but that it will be a space event. If somebody does appear, which is fine with me, then it will be extraterrestrials. With the ascension of mankind into the higher dimension of consciousness and the return of the knowledge of Atlantis and Lemuria, the purified continents of Atlantis and Lemuria will also rise out of the oceans because human consciousness is synchronized with the planetary consciousness. Humans who have decided to open up to the higher dimensions are beginning to feel a part of an ever-increasing learning process where life is the playground.
On the other hand, humans who have subconsciously decided to remain in the third dimension with their consciousness will not feel any great changes within themselves. But we will all experience the big process of purification on a planetary level. Because planet Earth is straightening its spine, that is, the axis of the poles is shifting again, and along with it, the climatic zones, at an extremely fast pace. The shifting of the poles has already begun. New cosmic energies will then flow through the spine of the Earth, that is the axis of the poles, and be distributed across the electromagnetic field of its aura. A pole shift can have different effects. We cannot say for sure because we have never observed it on Earth. But the fact that Earth is a gigantic magnet indicates that if it shifts its poles, the inner Earth will be slightly unbalanced. It may lead to volcanic eruptions, land mass shifts or earthquakes, and of course tidal waves both enormous and small. Naturally we must distinguish between the pole shift and the axis shift. Because Earth spins like a top, it is almost impossible that the axis would shift. In any case, we can't make a scientific statement about it. Theoretically, it would seem that an axis shift would be possible, but by whatever process, the Earth crust could shift, and for man on Earth, this would have the same effect as an axis shift. On the basis of scientific research, we can say that many such pole shifts have happened during the last 80 million years. They have occurred in a variety of frequencies. The most pole shifts we have had in one million years were four. But there were also a million years where we only had one pole shift. So the frequencies of the single pole shifts are subject to fluctuations. This is also a great shrinking unterworfen, the frequency of the single pole flips. The great flood in the Bible, which is known to practically all people, could be explained with a pole or axis shift, or a shift of the Earth's crust through which enormous waves of water, hundreds of meters high, could develop. By dem es uh, unter Umständen sehr große uh, Wasserwellen und uh, hunderte von Meter hohe Wogen geben kann. My observations with this device go back over the last 10 years. During that time, the strength of the magnetic field has reduced by around 4 degrees. As the old prophecies have already predicted, the wheat will part from the chaff. Those people who can adapt to the faster flowing energy by extending their consciousness will survive the purification process. Those people, however, who desperately cling to the old reality will have difficulties adjusting their bodies to the faster frequency. Therefore, their process of aging will be accelerated. The great purification will divide mankind into two big groups. Those who will consciously want to recognize the spirit in its entirety and the others who will continue to believe only in the things visible and provable and therefore will exclude themselves from the opening of higher dimensions of consciousness.